These are the bushings from the vendors for the reverse and for the, and for the low speed drum. And I find that most generally these don't need to be replaced. And so I, I do that by checking the fit and just simply drop my drum on and I'm looking to see if I've got any side play and I don't. Okay, I mean, there's a little clearance. The drum isn't rocking. There's nothing wrong with that bearing. So I'm going to reuse that bearing. So I'll put a little oil on here. We got to wash all this stuff up, so it, it's going to sound a little gritty. But again, this bearing looks pretty good, and I'll drop it in place. And I've got no appreciable movement in it. Now there's. A little more clearance here is a good thing uh, on any of these bushings in the transmissions, and it's and it's probably because we uh, drive them uh, at a little higher speed, so we need a little more clearance, and maybe the bronze uh, bushing material. There's been some discussion that that's changed over the year, but I'm happy enough with what's here rather than replacing in these bushings. If you, if you do have to replace the bushings, you'll have to press them out, put them in, and uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a set of forward reamers, it's a pretty easy task. If you don't have forward reamers, some guys use a, a, a spring hone and go in here and hone them because while they'll fit right now, when you push them in, they'll collapse some. Uh, some people hone them out with, a, with a, like a brake hone type thing. Uh, you can chuck it up in the lathe and center it and line bore the bearing. There are several different ways of getting that task done. I just, I'm just fortunate that I've got a set of uh, old original reamers that I use to do that if necessary. So in this case, we're not going to replace them. Uh, there's you know, quite a bit of information on how to do this uh, on the form and, and there's articles and the transmission book talks a little bit about it. So, but I'm happy with the transmission. And one of the, uh, imp what I feel is important is that the transmission be in balance. It's uh, 75, 80 pounds, flywheel, main shaft, the three drums. Uh, here we have three replacement drums, and we're going to visit about that a little bit. Uh, reverse, low speed, and brake drum. And as an assembly, of course it doesn't have the drive plate on it, I've got one of my shafts in here. And you can see that those three drums as a unit certainly aren't in balance. And if I move any one drum, it'll kind of respond differently. So if the thing weighs 70, 80 pounds and I've got something out of here that drops fairly quick to uh, the heavy side, uh, it's going to set up a bit of vibration and vibration uh, robs speed. So to fix that, I balance the drums individually. And we're going to look at these drums individually here so you can see what I'm talking about. Every one, none of them, and, by, and, and like I said, these are replacement drums and I would be very disappointed if I bought a brand new drum and it was that far out of balance. But to correct it, if it's not so far out, you can come in here and add weight to the low side and do a little bit of grinding on it and try to get it to where it will statically balance, stop in any one position. So our reverse drum certainly wasn't happy. Oops. Our low speed drum again it's out of balance and by the way we're using a it's a sophisticated you can buy this uh, Anderson brother makes it it's a relatively expensive piece of equipment you don't necessarily need to go to this route uh, if you're familiar with Fred Houston's transmission book, 
about 35 years ago or so we made a just a set of knives on a welded up frame and it will do just as good so you don't necessarily have to go find somebody that has this type of type of a equipment to use but all of these are independently of each other they're just all out of balance so we need to fix that um, I do have our main shaft and drive plate that previously we trued up the surfaces cleaned up the companion flanges uh, installed new bearings in the brake and a new bearing, uh, bearing in the bushing and we have already verified that this thing has you know in the four to six thousandths run out on it and this would be the first piece that I would get into balance <coughs> so what I'll do is I will identify where our heavy is and I have indexed this by the way to where when I take it apart and when I put it back together I'm always going to put it back together the way that I have it indexed but right now my heavy spot is right right here and I'll take this over to the drill press there's a lot of material in here and I'm, I'm going to drill a hole in there and see if I can make this better it's I've seen a lot worse okay but we're going to try to remove some weight out of the heavier spots grind some material off drill a couple of holes we can also come around to the front side seeing how where it's at and we can take a little bit of material out of here without uh, hurting the integrity of the part so we need to we need to move over to the drill press and start removing a little material back on the new drums there are different manufacturers it surprises me that for no more Model T's that we've got around the country there seems to be two possibly three manufacturers of drums these happen to be a cast uh, drum I don't know that they're still available maybe they still are but uh, there's a Dave's restoration who is built making drums out of a billet and my experience with those drums are and, the, and, and this would be new drums on old gears so you'd send in him a set of your old gears and he would put a new drum on it and I found those to be very very close to being balanced uh, might have to come in here and grind just a little material off but generally they balance up really really nice so uh, not all drums are created equal I guess is what I'm saying and uh, you know uh, I don't know I think these are uh, 250 180 200 dollars to maybe three four hundred dollars for a brake drum and if you spent that kind of money and you had to come in here and really whittle on one to get it in balance I wouldn't be too pleased with that so let's see if we can get our uh, dry plate brake drum in into uh, into uh, a balance and then we'll move on to picking we've got different drums out here we're going to find the best drums uh, no cracks obviously uh, no not not too thin and with decent gears on them transmission drums are getting hard to find good ones so let's get started and try to bring this one into balance uh, got some magnets these magnets here are about seven grams a piece and there's some other sizes that weigh a little bit more but our, our, our drum has became stationary and if I just take one of these magnets and put it on the side you can see the drum starts moving so I can a lot of times figure out about what I've got to remove uh, or add to by setting some magnets in different places to try to get it into balance uh, brake drum drive plate generally it's remove material okay never adding uh, brake drum uh, uh, reverse drum and low speed drum 
generally I'm adding material to because they're thin. Uh, there's not a lot of material to remove, and so you get one that drops like a rock. You're taking you're you're better off to add material to it, and that's usually done with a with a nut and a bolt and drilling a hole in the in in through the web in an area where it wouldn't cause a crack. Uh, some people are concerned with that. Uh, we've only been doing some of this sort of stuff for 20, 20 years maybe now and, uh, and in fact I've even had uh, transmissions come into the shop that uh, some individual did it before. I mean this is nothing we invented, this is just something that's different people have done over the years and I've come in, come in and found drums where there was a 3 8 inch bolt and a nut in them and the drum didn't crack, it's happy and it was in balance so I don't see there's any problem adding or drilling holes as long as you're not drilling. You know, you wouldn't want to come out here and drill a bunch of holes out here in the web of a thin uh, low speed drum or something like that, but you could certainly come in here and add some weight. All right, I've marked where my heavy spot is, and I'm going to take out a little material there, probably quite a bit. into it real slow I don't want to bite and I want to remove some material here and it was quite a ways out so we're gonna probably do it do this a couple of times Let's go, let's go see if we made a change. Okay, so we removed some material. Here's our heavy. So our light is up here. And if I, I put that back on our static balancer, and I didn't change it at all. So I've got to remove quite a bit more material. So we're going to go back and forth several times to the drill press. And perhaps even I'll get out our little high speed with a rotary file and remove some material uh, off of this uh, edge here. But our goal is to get that to where this drum will stop in any place. And as you can see, we still got a ways to go. So After back to the drill. There are many attempts of of drilling and uh, machining out and grinding and removing material, we now have a drum, a drive plate and brake drum that will stop anywhere I want it to. So it's about as good as what we're going to get it. But you can see we took a little bit here, drilled two holes all the way through. I did a little grinding with a high speed grinder here. Then we come in here and whittled a little bit off of one of the lugs where the uh, clutch discs all hold, but we didn't take enough material off to where it uh, causes an issue with the with the clutch discs. But uh, this is just about as happy as what we can we can make it. And if you remember, uh, the thing dropped to the heavy spot pretty rapidly, and now we can just stop it anywhere we want. So. This would complete what we would be doing on the drive plate brake drum combination. Could you do these individually? Yes, um, but I find it's just as easy just to bolt them together and, and do it as an assembly. So we're ready to start finding us a good, brake, a good reverse drum and a good low drum that we're going to use. It's got good gears and no cracks and we'll basically go through the same process uh, only we'll be probably we'll be adding material uh, and the material that we'll add is a is a nut and a bolt uh, a couple of them equally spaced out so we've found a low speed drum that we like it's got a decent set of gears on it there is some pitting into the gear surfaces 
but uh, as everybody keeps saying, eh, holds oil. So at any rate, I'll let this thing rock around here and we find that our heavy spot and I've came in here and marked it and so here's heavy. Uh, a low speed drum, if it was ideal, if it was right here, I've got two webs just if, it, if you drew a line through it I could put a bolt here and a bolt here and probably without a whole lot of work get that taken care of but I'm a little off of center so I'm still going to pick the two webs I'm going to put in a, 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 a weight and I know that um, I know that my little magnet's about seven grams and if I just came up here and stuck seven grams there it darn near stops anywhere I want so I'm going to put them here and we'll, we'll show it uh, once I get them installed it's, it still won't be balanced and then I'll dress down the nut and the bolt and try to get it close closer to balance and I may have to come in here and take a little material off so I'm going to mark here and here and I think we'll use uh, uh, we'll get out our scale here and we'll find uh, uh, a nut and a bolt combination that weighs out about seven uh, about three four five grams something a piece and install it here we found a couple of uh, screws and nuts that weigh about three grams a piece and remember we were this was our heavy spot right here and we came to the opposite side and drilled a couple small holes and put these you know they're what three-eighths of an inch long something like that uh, nuts and screws in it and uh, believe it or not we kinda got lucky we hit it pretty much I can stop it anywhere I want. So we're pretty happy. We got a reasonable gear and fairly nice low speed surface on it. So we're we'll probably be happy here. Uh, you can see the screw is extending through, but that doesn't cause an issue because this piece goes up onto the brake drum and if I drop it down you can't see in there with the camera too good but there's a good oh gosh quarter inch plus clearance between the brake drum and the low speed drum so it doesn't hit doesn't do any interference and we didn't add anything to our brake drum that we're using as far as adding weight we removed weight so this is uh, this is how I would fix it uh, final would be for some good red Loctite on both these screws and tighten them down and uh, that drums balanced we're happy with that one so now we got to find us a reverse drum that we like and do the same thing we'll add some weight to it maybe grind a little weight off you don't know we just got to find us a a decent old brake drum that's got good gears and that one has good gears and no cracks we'd already pretty well looked these over and so if this is our brake drum that we like first thing we'll do is we'll put it up on our machine and we'll identify and boy we got some weight to add to that one so this one's going to take quite a bit of weight work just like the brake drum did so we're uh, going to get started on that and uh, see if we can get that one into balance so we've got us a reverse drum now that we're looking at pretty decent gear good surface for the uh, band to ride on and believe it or not we've got one that I can stop in about 
Well, I can stop it anywhere I want it to. So, that's kind of a first. Moved a little bit there. What was that about? I yeah, probably pushed it. Right out of the bag from Ford, there's one that's balanced. So we're just going to use that drum as is.